Hi guys and welcome to Bomb Anime. It's your girl Ruka. A big boy summer here bringing you the saga of Kanye the Evil. Okay, so I did it. I made Big Boy Sama watch Tanya the Evil. Yes, she did. By force. Um, okay. Okay, by force, man. By force. Loud, Seriously, man. I've been trying to get you to watch it since, what, 2017? All right, so I watched this anime in it, and it was all right, in it? It was all right. Okay, so firstly, what I want to know is, how do you feel about me comparing you to Tanya the Evil? Now that you've watched the series. Okay, I can see similarities in our thinking. I mean, I can see real, a lot of similarities <laughs> in our thinking. There's a big, huge ideological difference, but I'm pretty sure that we'd probably approach every situation, most of them at least, the same. But there's, there's a huge ideological difference. I'm not sure I'm strong enough when faced with something that supernatural to turn around and say, Nah, fam. I'm not sure I'm that. I'm that guy. Yeah. Um. That Tanya's a better person than me. I think in that respect. <laughs> no, I feel the same way. Like if a being is literally in front of you and they've done stuff like stopping time, reincarnating you, giving you superpowers. Like, who cares if it's an alien? If they're saying they're god. I mean, it, it seemed kind of godlike to me, so... Yeah, in the art of self-preservation, I'm going to call it whatever it wants to be called and I'm going to do whatever it wants because there's an immediate danger there. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be real with you. I will twist like the reed, bro. <laughs> if it says jump, I'm jumping. Because Tanya's got balls and, like, I respect that. That's not me. I don't think... <laughs> but I also think that being X is really effed up because... He used a bunch of people to go up against Tanya, but it wasn't in good faith because the only thing that being X is trying to do is force Tanya to accept him. Those other people ended up as being collateral damage and they actually seriously believed in God. So I just thought that was like messed up. So in order to force someone who doesn't believe in God to believe in you, you're going to throw the people that actually believe in you under the bus. Um, it tracks. <laughs> How does look? Okay, here's a parable. I don't. I don't know oh if you no. guys. I don't. I don't know if you guys have heard of this kind of story before. Not another Bible story. There's a hundred lamb in the sheep. One lamb goes missing. You leave the ninety nine to go find that one. I'm just saying, wolves be damned or whatever that could get and be damned. I'm gonna go and find that one that went missing it's I'm, like the prodigal said that one that story pisses me off as an older child <laughs> that one hurts man. yes right I'm also the oldest so maybe it resonates with the oldest look, child look leave it in the comments if you're an older child and you know about the prodigal son and if you think it's fair be honest it's fine we're not God we won't judge you <laughs> stop humans are the most judgmental um <laughs> so what did you actually think about the series okay honestly i think it was a brilliant piece of writing and i am so upset with myself at the fact that i didn't watch it earlier i know that the new season is fabled to come out this year sometime who knows to January, be it's supposed to be this month yeah it's not not happening though. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's supposed to come out but i'm glad i watched it it was a great story as someone who's english watching a story about the protagonist being pseudo see was a little bit jarring but once i got over that and looked past it and then saw them as just enemy combatants and allied combatants it could have been anywhere and it would still be a great story the only thing that was flimsy for me was the character being x themselves because even they weren't consistent in what they wanted but it wasn't flimsy in terms of story writing it's just that the character's flaw was the fact that they were flimsy but again, that kind of tracks, so, you know, it is what it is. What about it being similar to Nazi Germany did you dislike? The fact that it, it felt like it was glorifying horrible behaviour, which mirrored what they did, I agree with that, but that being seen in a good light, that's, that's the thing that got me a little bit... I disagree. That's fine. Simply because... It wasn't focusing on the terrible things that they did in Germany. Like, there was 
no mention of the Holocaust or anything similar to people being mistreated and tortured and murdered for no reason apart from the fact that they're Jewish. And because they didn't do that, it was only a war drama. And because it's a similar type of world, it's easy to believe that that's not going on in this world necessarily. No, I, I understand that, but for me, it was just because they set the scene that way, it conjured up memories of that. And so that's why I said, once I got past that, it was cool. Yeah, I mean, I But you. the atrocity that I thought was completely horrible that they did highlight over and over again was the fact Tanya was a little girl. And they sent her to the <laughs> front lines, blew her up, constantly had her in death, literally death-defying decisions and situations. And they mentioned it themselves, so they themselves knew that sending a little girl wasn't a good idea, but did it anyways. And then wouldn't listen to her when she came up with the reason as to why they shouldn't be resting on their laurels just because you had one strategic win. Because the girl wrote the play-by-play -play about how the war should go, and then you decided not to listen to the rest of the book. But to me, that tracks historically. Of course it tracks. Uh, the people that tend to be going to war are children. Um, the army will do careers days at schools. <laughs> like, they're, they're not... <laughs> I don't know about any other country, but I do know historically, the people going to war are the young kids that or older teenagers. And it varies depending on what age you're allowed to start going. Some countries it's 16 years old. In fact, I would say at no age do you know anything about anything in terms of risking your life for someone who you don't even know's ideals and you don't even know it's the ideals you're fighting for are even real. I mean, look at the whole weapons of destruction that we had over here. They were telling us over and over again that there were weapons of destruction in Iraq and it turned out, well, we all know how that turned out. So, so it's kind of like, at no point do you really know what you're fighting for. It's always kids and the people who are actually fighting are never listened to even though they are the ones that kind of know more because they're experiencing it they can actually see it for themselves and instead it's someone else who is never going to go to war over here making all of the choices yeah so i think that using an even younger child was even more impactful i loved that yeah, and it because it's a little girl who is it was perfect. supposed to be cute i mean how when did she start like nine years old uh, did she start at like eight or four or something like that and then graduate at eight? No, I mean, in terms of actually going to war, I think eight, she was eight. nine. I thought she was eight. Oh, eight, maybe yeah. eight. Okay, around that age when she actually started fighting. I mean, yes, it was great social commentary because like even the wars today that are around the world that no one sees on CNN or Fox News or Sky News or any news at all i.e. the conflicts happening with Boko Haram, the stuff happening in certain areas in the Middle East, the conflicts happening in certain areas in Central Africa, the conflicts happening in the favelas of the Latino countries, the ones that no one's talking about. Yeah. They are not adults and young men or women who have had lives and had the ability to go have kids and experience life. They're the ones who are just starting their lives and not even just started their lives and losing their lives. So let's be fair. It, it was a great spit in the face of of the justifications of war and I, I, I loved it like the, the whole the mixture between religion faith war purpose and and reincarnation all of that mixing pot which are the big questions the only question they really didn't hit was love in terms of the the, the eros sort of love they, they hit a lot of familial love and a lot of um, brotherly love and camaraderie but they didn't hit the the love between a lover and another lover so that was the only theme that they really didn't touch and it's great that they did it considering it's an anime and it's a little girl good points for that and thank you and <laughs> so only, people could be in love no i get that but <laughs> that was the focus so yeah. so it was great it was a great way of mixing some of the big questions together to create a piece of writing that actually showed you the human condition and the human fragility and the hubris of the victor and the the, the steadfastness of the losers and all but this was a very good watch and i don't know why you didn't tell me to watch it earlier like. oh my god i'm gonna kill you <laughs> i 
really like Tanya's facial expressions. I think it's amazing. Yep. Like, oh, it's so good. The emotions, the crazed insanity that overcomes her, like the intense emotions on such a young face. Yeah. I also like how the hair, even if it's coming over the eyes, you can still see the eyes at all times. I feel like the eyes in this animation is extremely important as part of the story. I I I know that we're probably about to wrap this up, but I really want to mention her training regiment for her team. That was bang on fun to watch. It, it yeah. was great to see her put them through hell. Justify it, even though she had her own, you know, ulterior motives. But justify it by saying, War ain't kind, so never am I. <laughs> You're not going to play Kiss Chase, mate. You're going to war. Like, do you know what I mean? It was fantastic. Again, it was another brilliant way of doing the social commentary about how the agendas of those in charge are not the agendas and the ideals of the people actually doing the heavy lifting. And again, it was, it was so convoluted and interwoven that it made, again, a really great story. And... The fact that I watched it now and the second season has not come out now has really annoyed me a little bit. You've I've, got a movie to watch. Yes, that's true. So I'm going to use the movie to tide me over, but I definitely, definitely, definitely need a season two. And on that note... If you guys have made it this far, we really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Peace.